Hi students, today's lecture is about paper number one of your CSEET, the Foundation Entrance Test, and this is regarding uh, business communication. So here in this on the screen you can see business communication and the chapters in our subject. So there, as you can see, they're very basic subjects, but I would say that not to take this subject very lightly because the subject not only plays an important role in uh, clearing your paper, but it also plays an important role in your upcoming career life because once you clear your company secretary or from the start of your industrial training and everything in uh, rather in your MSOP training also, we people train you to be an expert in business communication because nowadays all everything of your professional expertise and everything can only be determined and acknowledged only if you have good communication skills so business communication comprises of your reading writing verbal and even listening skills so this particular paper is all about learning and making yourself an expert in it and uh, not only you should be uh, you know concentrating on this subject because you have to clear it but also because if you excel in it it is going to give you an edge over others once you are through with your exams and you are in the field of you know in the competitive field of company secretaries chartered accountants ic wai cost cost accountants so even mbas for that matter iims mbas you know the experts of commerce basically you would be regarded as the experts of commerce so for that one important the most important criteria i would say is knowledge expertise is knowledge and to deliver that knowledge you have to be an expert of business communication so you have to have good presentation skills you 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 should be able to present yourself very well in front of the uh, you know whosoever you are sitting be it your manager in your job be it your uh, you know be it your own firm when you are representing to the clients about your own work so i have been into corporate uh, you know I've had experience of 10 years uh, in the corporate field so I've worked in firms I've worked in uh, MNCs and what have what all I have observed is you know having a set of uh, you know uh, having knowledge about the laws and uh, tax you know the other subjects is one thing but to be able to deliver it and to be able to showcase your skills to others is another talent and it is also valued at the same level and at power so if you have the knowledge but you're not able to showcase it so it's not worth it that is why you have to be an expert in business communication also these days and this is precisely the reason that it has become part of your curriculum in ICSI so let's take a look at the uh, you know let's take a look at the topics uh, we have in our uh, this paper which is the first chapter uh, says is english grammar and its usage the other one is enriching vocabulary comprehension of passage and art of summarizing is third chapter concept of business communication chapter number fourth listening skills chapter fifth business correspondence concept of e-correspondence common business terminologies so as as and when we are progressing towards in the chapters and when we are coming to the topics i would be explaining you what exactly the meaning of that particular thing is as well as i will be correlating that to the practical or the outside world scenario once you are a company secretary how useful all of this would be so that you are able to relate it and you are able to understand that how important it is for you to have good business communication skills so uh, i am not starting with chapter one and chapter two today even chapter three 
I am skipping that because I think a normal simple reading of these chapters will also make you learn I mean will make you understand these chapters and I don't think that you should find any challenge but in case you want me to record a separate video of chapter number one and two you can email me or whatsapp me I would be happy to help you guys but I think that this is very basic and there is uh, you know there's nothing much to explain about it but if any of even one student would if uh, you know if even one student would ask me that please we need a uh, you know a separate uh, video for that I would be if, uh, I mean I'd be doing that for you guys so just let me know but as of now I'd be starting today with chapter number four which is concept of business communication so coming to the chapter number fourth which is so students as you can see I am referring to the ICSI study material only because I had gone through it and I think this is comprehensive enough and I do not uh, think that you should go read any other books because it is uh, you know very well explained in it has uh, it uh, everything in it and whatever you need for the paper and also otherwise so if you want any the extra additions we would be uh, you know taking up the uh, uh, examples to explain it but I don't think we should be referring any other book or there should be another extra study material that you should be referring to because uh, ICSI's material is sufficient and uh, regarding more practice or to understand the concept uh, for understanding the concepts if you need more of the uh, questions to practice that we would be that would be definitely there and even the MCQs would we will be practicing after we cover a sufficient uh, portion of the subject so MCQs will be there and I, uh, I don't think that after looking at my lecture you would need to go anywhere else and or to refer any study material because uh, it is uh, sufficient if you look take a look at my videos only twice or thrice even once if you pay full attention to it so coming to our chapter number four which is concept of business communication so as you all know business communication is uh, let's just take a look at uh, whatever our module says the word communicate has been derived from the latin word communis which means to share now communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols signs or behavior now it is the expression of facts opinions ideas or feelings so coming to understanding what exactly does the concept of communication says now communication is what what I am doing right now is also a form of communication I am trying to explain you what communication is that is through the way of expression of my facts or my ideas or feeling ex trying to explain it through my words I am trying to tell you something so this is what is communication you know you are trying to tell something to the other person by way of uh, by verbally by way of signs and symbols sharing your ideas or opinions like how I feel about communication what the concept of communication means in simple words when you're trying to tell someone uh, regarding an idea or your feeling that is event that is uh, the meaning of communication so it is an essential condition for our existence like it's said here it is an essential condition for our existence and the most important activity of human beings now this is one thing which you know separates us or which makes us uh, you know uh, have a have an edge you could say over others over other species on the earth like we are I mean we are able to uh, communicate with each other we are able to tell what we are feeling we are able to express it in all forms of ways I mean we can tell it we can write it down we can uh, talk over the phone and all sorts of um, and there are means of communication which would be uh, taking uh, going further we will be I'll be explaining that to you so uh, communication can also be uh, also be referred to as exchange of information 
I have something to tell you. Now, uh, I am uh, teaching you or in other words also, I have something to tell you and I'm going to tell you through uh, over the call or through any other medium, be it, uh, be it an email, be it a text message or be it verbally or be it face to face. All these are methods of communication. So for communication, obviously, if I have to communicate it to myself, I do not need to speak it. I mean, what would I explain it or communicate to myself? There should be an exchange of ideas or information between two people. Minimum is two people. That if I have something and I need to share it with someone, so one, it could be one, it could be two, it could be multiple people. But then at least two people should be there wherein there is a communication of any idea or a feeling or any message. So now, as I was explaining communication, let's just, uh, you know, write down some short points so that you come uh, understand what we are actually trying to say. Since this is all in paragraph, you can break it down into points to understand. Like now I am explaining, you can take a note of it in your uh, books uh, and uh, also remember that this first line is very important. The word communicate has been derived from the Latin word communis which means to share. Most of the students would just take a reading and you know not pay attention to this but these small facts are important for your objective type questions because when objective type questions are framed it is uh, you know kept in mind that all uh, uh, you know to judge that students are paying attention and students know even the minute details these types of questions are framed so it is important for you to understand whatever is written in the books like here it is written in a paragraph you can break it down into points so we will go point by point while I'm explaining it to you you can keep noting it in your notebooks Right. So like I explained, this is important that where did the word communicate come from? It is derived from the Latin word communis, which means to share. Now I've read across this uh, definition of communis and here I've taken a note of it. Now communication, once we break, break down the definition, here we can understand by breaking it down. So basically what is communication? It is a process, right? It is a process here. If you see, it is a process which uh, results in exchange of information. Now here if I underline that, I mean, I'm just not making so that it would look messy, which is why I'm just, uh, you know, moving the cursor over there. That process communication is a process which results in exchange of information between individuals and the main purpose of communicating is to transfer the information which one person has to the other. So when would we come, uh, how would we know that communication has been done successfully or not? So we would regard that that communication has been done successfully if the message which was intended to be delivered has been understood in the same way by the receiver like here. Right. So this is step one if we say right. This is step one. Okay. This would be step, step two. We are breaking it down just to make, I am breaking it down the definition just to make you clear. If you are, if you have understood it, well and good. So the point number two would be transfer of information. This is our purpose when we are communicating. This is what we are trying to do. We are transferring the information that uh, we know to the other person. Then the third thing which is important in the communication process is that the receiver should understand the intended message. So, for example, now here I've uh, quoted uh, an instance where Pallavi's boss asks her to write an email and fix up a meeting with XYZ company for discussion regarding financial assessment. So now communication is supposed to be done by a way of an email. So Pallavi is supposed to write to the client XYZ company uh, and fix up the meeting as discussed by his boss, by her boss and she has to, you know, uh, tell the client regarding the meeting that they are planning to have a meeting for the discussion regarding financial assessment. So there are two, three uh, 
so how do we understand what i have just further initially explained that here there is a transfer of information first from the boss to pallavi that uh, you can uh, i am making uh, myself uh, repeatedly telling you uh, this instances so that when you are writing down you know what i am trying to tell you and when you are making notes you are able to write down each and everything so first and foremost is there is the transfer of information firstly from the boss to pallavi that he wants to fix up a meeting uh, for, with XYZ and company for the discussion regarding financial assessment. The second information transfer is that he wants uh, Pallavi to write an email to the client, right? So that is also again, so all these are the transfer of information. One communication is done from Pallavi's boss to Pallavi. Then the another, that was, that is a verbal communication. You know, he has orally or face to face spoken to Pallavi and has asked uh, Pallavi to write down an email with to, and fix up a meeting with the client which is the xyz company for discussion so two forms of communication here we are talking about one is the verbal communication wherein pallavi uh, has been uh, you know asked by his boss that she needs to write an email to the client so the second form of communication would be via email wherein she would be writing to the client xyz company that we want to fix up a meeting with you uh, regarding the discussion of uh, your of the financial and assessment of your company so this is just uh, uh you know uh, i do not i did not uh, make it very complicated because it, i did not want you to get confused uh, further we will have more examples wherein all the uh, details would be there proper details but since i was explaining right now that we are talking about only communication and what communication actually means so in simple words communication is just an exchange of information and uh, the example here I've uh, referred that this particular one statement consists of two types of communication one uh, Pallavi being communicated by the boss that uh, she is supposed to write an email to the client and in the email she is communicating with the client and asking them for fixing up a meeting for discussion of their financial assessment with them so two forms of communication now this is a form of communication as well as business communication let's quickly take a look at this uh, you know give a quick reading to this paragraph and also these definitions so a number of definitions have been given to the term communication a few important ones are since it's not clear here you can also you can take a you know you can zoom in uh, in your uh, computers you i would suggest that when you're taking a look at uh, my videos you can open the pdf which has been provided by the icsi institute the material is there on the website if you want i can share the link with you guys but uh, you just simply have to log into icsi and therein you will see the academic portal then a link to cseet would uh, open where you have to click on the reading reference material and there all the four subjects will have their pdf copy so you can open this pdf when you're going through my videos so it would be easy for you to relate and read right so now the first uh, definition is by mr hudson which says that communication in its simplest form of con in its simpler form of conveying of information from one person to another so like i am just delivering this information and i am trying to explain you this particular a concept so this is also called conveying of information from one person to another so this is the simplest way of explaining what communication means moving further communication is the transfer of information from one person to another whether or not it elicits confidence so all of these definitions are a way of just explaining what communication actually means so most for you it is important to understand what communication means and also take a note of these definitions because a question can be made out of it that you know they can simply write down communication is uh, the definition of the communication and then they can question that this was you know quote this definition was quoted by a b c d they can give you the 
names of the authors right now uh, sir alan lewis uh, has you know uh, made a comprehensive definition of communication so let's just go through that the above uh, definition was by george terry which is which says that it is an exchange of facts ideas opinion or emotions by two or more persons like i also earlier said that two is the least uh, you know is the least number of individuals which are involved during a communication because a single person between a single person there can be no communication because what will i be communicating to myself that i already know everything and uh, you know the, uh, a single person cannot talk to itself or uh, himself or herself so that is why either two or more than two individuals communication happens between them so it is just a simple exchange of facts ideas opinions or emotions for that matter So even when you guys two or three people are smiling and exchange of emotions they're smiling with each other or one person is crying in front or sharing their you know emotions with the other so that is also a way of communication and now communication the, the definition by sir alan lewis communication is the sum of all things one person does when he wants to create understanding in the mind of another right uh it's just the way of looking at how you are trying to explain your concept like i am trying to explain you communication in a different way somebody else if you want to you know take a look at understand from someone else they would have a different perception or way of explaining so it is all about how you look at it right so it is a bridge of meaning it involves a systematic and continuous process of telling listening and understanding so like he is saying here he is referring that it is not that up uh, you know you just uh, came up with an idea and you just you know blurt it out or you know you try to explain it or whatever it was in your mind you just spoke it and the communication process is complete no it's not like that if you're trying to explain you have to explain it in a way which is understood by the other person also so once you have delivered the message the purpose doesn't solve here the purpose solves when it is successfully delivered and the intended meaning of the uh, mess you know of the communication has been understood by the receiver so here uh, you know he um, sir alan lewis has uh, rightly covered the concept of delivery of the message is successful communication i mean it is important that the message delivered or the message intended to be delivered is understood by the receiver that also comprises of the part of communication okay so now we will uh, quickly i will just tell you what all important things are there uh, obviously whatever we have covered is important and uh, whatever is there in this paragraph also is the same thing which we have already discussed so let's just quickly take a look and you can just underline like here it is it is mentioned that communication is a two way process yes understood we have discussed about it it is an essential condition of our existence that's okay so there must be at least two persons to allow the completion of the process that also we have discussed one takes up the role of a sender and the other that of the receiver like i am the sender of the information and you guys are the receiver of the information So Webster's dictionary states that communication is the act of exchanging information and understanding from one person to another. For communication to be successful, the exchange of ideas and information must result in imparting and understanding its intended meaning. Like we've said that it is very important that if I am trying to tell you something, you being the receiver should be able to understand what I am trying to tell you. Only then will my purpose of communicating that particular message is solved. Here, so its purpose is to effect desired changes in the behavior of the receiver of the message. Thus, communication is the transfer of information from one person to another, and its goal is to have the receiver understand the message as it was intended. Okay. so three things here in communication we can say one is that i am trying to deliver a message the other is you have received the message there is transfer of the information 
third and the most important that you have understood the message which is delivered in the intended way of what I am trying to say. I mean there, see, now there is a part of interpretation. What I am trying to say, it can, if I am not communicating properly to you, it can be interpreted in any other way also. So that can lead to a an unsuccessful transmission of the message. So that is the sender also has to keep in mind the way they are delivering the message should be rightly taken by the receptor. Right? So like we discussed in our example, la, the email and you know uh, Pallavi's boss is trying to communi has communicated her to write an email. So there are forms of communication. One is writing and one is speaking. So both the things involve language. When I'm communicating it to you, my language has to be proper and clear and concise and apt, concrete, everything. There has to be clarity in what I'm trying to tell you. Similarly, you have, while you are writing, uh, you know, be it an email or a text message or anything, uh, you have to write it also in a proper way so that the message whosoever is reading that message is understanding the way it was intended to be understood hope i have made myself clear i mean uh, you know by quoting the examples and everything quoting the definitions we have covered everything that was there in that part so i've not missed out anything you can just quickly take down the important underlining parts which i have also uh, you know we have discussed for uh, earlier and here also in this particular paragraph like i i have explained that it is a two way process it must involve two persons at least two persons one takes up the role of a sender the other that of the receiver communication is the act of exchanging information Exchange of ideas and information must result in imparting an understanding of its intended meaning and it's the communication is transfer information. That's the same thing. Receiver has to understand the message as it was intended. The most important part. This is what determines the successful communication. Right now business communication. What does it say and how it is different from the concept of it is not different from the concept of information, but it does involve other aspects. So let's start on. Let's just take a uh, reading of it. When one communicates to transact some commercial activity that is providing goods or services with the intention of generating profit, it is termed as business communication. Now, according to Scott. Administrative communication is a process which involves the transmission and accurate replication of ideas ensured by feedback for the purpose of eliciting action which will accomplish organizational goals. Now here if you see we are talking the one more term which is added is feedback is important. So what does this feedback determines? This feedback determines that whether what we have you know uh, passed on to the uh, the other person in term when what we receive as a feedback would able to uh, would uh, you know assess whether the message which has which was transferred was delivered aptly or not so the importance of communication to an organization all the more so to a business organization cannot be over emphasized over emphasized it links not only the various components of the organization but also its internal world with the external world in order be proficient in order to be proficient here it is a miss in order to be proficient in business communication it becomes imperative to acquire skills of effective writing and speaking in fact lack of these may result in loss of business opportunities so like i said that it 
effective business communication skills these days are an important part for every individual who wants to be a part of business or or you know who wants to join an organization who wants to have an organization of their own because if you're not communicating rightly it is definitely going to you know make an uh, make a bad effect on your ongoing business because when the messages even internally as well as ex externally if you're not able to you now being an employee if you're not able to explain it to your boss or your colleagues what you're trying to do or whatever you try and do the message being delivered is not uh, right being rightly delivered so that is going to hamper your position in the organization likewise if an organization is not uh, able to communicate well with the outside uh, you know outside communi uh, business uh, environment then that will definitely hamper the business of that particular op organization because you know there will be they like i said there are interpretations of everything if the message is delivered correctly and, and is interpreted correctly it is going to give you an advantage but if it is uh, going the other way around it is definitely going to be a disadvantage for you so now uh, like it's saying here so therefore curriculums of most business schools so that is why MBAs are more focused on uh, having good communication skills were more focused but now these days we are also uh, you know uh, these things have become important in our curriculum as well so earlier the students were not inclined towards having good presentation skills focusing on their reading and writing skills but these days it has become imperative and very important for you to survive and excel in your field right so this was a basic intro of for business communication now here we were talking normally about the exchange of ideas here in business communication how does communication and business communication differentiate the only dif not the only difference but the major difference is here we are talking about a transaction or a commercial activity and it involves providing goods or services with the intention of generating profits so here in business our business is also involved in it and we are not only talking about external communication we are also talking about the internal communication for example in an organization there are you know all the departments production is there uh, supply is there so revenue is there um, human resources is there so all of these departments have to be in sync and they can be in sync only if they're communicating effectively with each other so if there is a lapse in communication so they won't be in sync and ultimately what would happen the business would suffer right so a few add-ons uh, i would like to give in this lecture uh, if you want to improve your communication skills what are the points that you should start practicing apart from going through the whatever it's in your curriculum is first and foremost if you uh, think that you're not fluent in english and you want to first improve your english right away start reading newspapers and believe me children this is important because you have to not only pass this exam i am time and again telling you this is very important for you as once you become a company secretary there are a lot there would be you know a bunch of challenges which would be ahead of you and the you know the fight doesn't stop once you become a company secretary it just begins because there will be the whole world outside wherein you have to compete with chartered accountants company uh, company secretaries of obviously your own uh, you know fraternity there will be more company secretaries passing out so you would be not the only one and then you will have ICWAs you will have MBAs you will have lawyers so it is uh, a whole world outside waiting for you and if you have to enter and you know take a place in there and take a prominent place where uh, which you aim for or which you have been dreaming about you have to make yourself uh, fully prepared right so 
becoming a knowledge bank and you know just uh, it is important to have knowledge of all these subjects which you will be studying in company secretary but at the same time it is very important that you are fluent in english you are able to present yourself and in front of an expert panel or once you become a company secretary when you go out for a job the confidence that comes when you know that you're fluent in english and you can communicate well in english so that confidence you will not be there in the other students who would not practice well for business communication skills so it is not a subject for you it is a skill that you have to own and that you have to excel in so make it a motto and if you think you know if you'll take it as that this is a skill that you have to own and you have to excel in you would definitely start your uh, you know start trying and start your self uh, start making efforts for yourself because everybody knows that where they are lacking so if you think that you would have to work on your english speaking english fluency you should start reading newspapers start watching news channels that which are in english not the hindi news only the english news and preferably cnn ibn if to begin with you find that language is you know difficult to understand you can start with the uh, english channels like ndtv news and all and uh, and initially it would seem like you know you will have to develop interest in it you have to take uh, you have to be determined and focused that no you need to do it initially it would seem a little difficult but once you start watching them you will develop interest because you will be gaining knowledge not only learning english but also gaining knowledge of what is happening in the outside world outside world see you can uh, choose to uh, see whatever you uh, your interests are in if you are interested in stock markets or if you are interested in business news or for that matter social news i mean if you for the, uh, if you are watching series on uh, your uh, whatever uh, you know web series you can watch series or english uh, you know uh, the series which are in english or you can go for to start with the children who have no who have very low confidence to start with they can watch they can start watching hindi or probably english series which have subtitles in it where you can see what they are speaking and look for the subtitles and believe me over a period of time if you even do it for a month you would see that your there is a you know lot of improvement uh, in your because right now if you start you have uh, cseet to clear then you have your executive exams then you have your professional exams if from the beginning you have started working on your communication skills and till the end you'll definitely find yourself in a better place than you are right now so how how can you improve yourself and uh, you can always take help from me apart from that what are the pointers which you can practice self practice at home would be reading newspapers be it the economic times and be it the hindustan times the business column of the hindustan times times of india why i'm saying business columns and economic times because these uh, information would be related to your field and keeping an update of what is happening in the uh, finance or in you know in our whole economy and all of this would definitely be an advantage for you and um, okay so if you want to practice on your writing skills you can start writing articles you can start blogging but don't spend too much time on it because you have also your exams to clear so it can be you know you can just uh, make uh, or reserve some time wherein you have to practice on your communication skills maybe half an hour or an hour and trust me this is going to help you long term and a lot see i am telling you everything by my own experience thankfully i did not have to uh, you know have faced this challenge but i have seen students in turns in my career who were so good at their knowledge who were uh, you know who really knew everything but their confidence level was so low because they knew that they cannot communicate well and uh, you know they passed their exams in first attempts they were so good at studies they even cleared and got 70 70 
90 marks in their papers but just because they knew that they cannot speak well in English and they cannot write well in English or once they are you know sitting uh, before a panel who is experienced enough to come in and you know they were so low on confidence that they were not able to present I myself have rejected interviews of a lot of students because my panel was not interested to you know enroll them uh, as their presentation skills were not good and up to the mark so that is why I am uh, forcing you to just start practicing on these skills because I do not want a student who is an expert or in his field or in his subject his or her subject and because of lack of confidence of not being able to present themselves or they know inside that you know they do not have those communication skills or they feel they start feeling that inferiority complex once they see people outside who are so well in communicating even graduates for that matter you know who have uh, had the chance to work on their communication skills they are so well uh, they present themselves so well that uh, the students from our fraternity who have done so much hard work who have you know uh, studied day and night and they know the they are the experts in the subject they you, the, the confidence just crashes when they see that the other people are communicating well and we are not that uh, good in that so they are not able to present and then that is why that uh, the reason they lack is this so i do not want any child to face this particular uh, challenge and which is why i am forcing that you should from this day onwards you should start working on your communication skills and this is going to definitely help you even in writing your papers and clearing your exams as well as in uh, once you are in the field and once you are competing with chartered accountants and you know the MBAs or lawyers or the other experts of the commerce field you have that confidence that you know your subject well and you can compete and stand out in front of them so take my advice start working on it take out some time half an hour uh, or to one hour is also sufficient and if you are facing any challenge, if you want that I should help you out with this, you can reach out to me, you can WhatsApp me, you can call me and I would be happy to help you. Okay, so we were talking about if you want to, uh, so the self-practice things are reading newspapers, uh, for writing you can, you know, start writing articles, start writing uh, short stories and also one, most, uh, one more important thing which can help you is you can start writing your own diary, you know, the daily habit of writing a diary, 5 to 10 minutes, that would also help you because, uh, you know, start writing a page or two and then once you are in the field, once you join your trainings and once you uh, join the industrial training or, uh, you know, those, uh, the ROC trainings and all, you will understand that uh, yes whatever I was saying is definitely uh, does definitely applies in the practical life and it is going to benefit you so you'll start working on them yourself so this is a little tip from my end to you guys start working on your communication skills and any help needed you will I am there to help you okay so moving on to features of communication now communication is essentially a two-way process yes of course the sender and the receiver because a two-way process the sender transmits the message to the receiver and the receiver receives it once we receive the feedback so that is the way of assessing that whether our communication is successful or not so the success or the failure of communication is decided by the feedback we get hence feedback is essential to communication you can write down over these points you can write down uh, small headings like for communication you can write uh, for the first feature you can write it's a two-way process so just the heading two-way process and that would be while you are revising you'd be able to understand the two-way process is one of the features of business communication the second comes as communication is an ongoing process right communication is essential in all kinds of organization and at 
all levels of management. No manager can be effective in his role unless he is able to communicate. Professional and result-oriented organizations are always looking for managers who can communicate persuasively and competently. So, uh, again, the second heading would be ongoing process. Okay, write it down on the second point. It's an ongoing process. So, ongoing process would be the heading. Or you can just underline if you don't want to uh, make your page look messy you can just underline or highlight these two things two-way process and the second one would be the ongoing process so what this point is saying that communication is essential in all like i explained in my earlier example there are different departments in an organization and communication between them is also essential because one department cannot keep working and just uh, believe that you know the organization is working effectively until and unless they are communicating if production is happening they have to communicate them that how uh, man, how many goods and services have been produced or whatever the production is what is the quantity of that and how much supply is available they have to communicate that to the supply team and once the supply is uh, has started going out so cost of production plus the number of supply is gone so the sales so all of this is so much interrelated how to generate profits or how much profits is generated that a communication will again go back to the management so coming to our point so this communication keeps on happening in the organization and then there are different levels of organization we have the higher level we have a middle level and we have the supervisory level so all of you know what a uh, high level management middle level management and uh, uh, lower level management means so just a few uh, just a quick revision of that high level we have the strategic management wherein people uh, as in the chairman the board of directors the uh, ceo cfo all of these come in the higher level management they are the ones who take the decision of uh, the uh, de decisions for the organization the the bigger decisions i would say taking a call on how much is the profit of the company company and how do we move about so that the company earns more profits whether the company is going into losses or what are the challenges ahead these decisions are made by the higher level management now coming to the middle level middle level would uh, comprise of the managers senior managers so production heads and all the department heads of the organization who would who take care of their own departments, who head their departments and ensure that all these departments work in sync and, uh, you know, they work towards the common goal of making the uh, organization's objectives, re, uh, you know, achieving organization objectives. So these are the middle level and coming to the supervisory levels would be again the uh, subordinates of managers who are at the you know at a level where they are handling the uh, you know the certain set of people and leading a team wherein uh, all of these three uh, management levels are working towards one single agenda which is to work towards a common goal of achieving the objectives of the organization and making it a profitable organization okay so so what all uh, again communication becomes an effective part of it because all these decisions one the transactions being taken or done by all the levels of management are inter are communicated to each other so all these uh, departments are linked to communication and if any of them as a manager or as a senior partner or as a team lead fails in their role so it would eventually fail the company's objectives to achieve the desired goal right so which is why here it is written that professional and result oriented organizations are always looking for managers who can communicate persuasively and competently. For example, if you have a, a deadline of three days and uh, this project is needed by the management to be prepared and it is not possible. Uh, if you only put in your uh, hours which you have uh, you know like for example six hours or so these are the challenging times and company expects so the, it, there is a competitive world outside and company expects you to be over uh, uh, you know 
efficient. Uh, so if there is a deadline of three days and you need to complete that, so the burden comes on you that how efficiently you are, uh, you have to first understand that how you will be able to do or complete this uh, project uh, in three days. And then you have to make your team, uh, you know, uh, help you out in for these three days and then there'll be all sorts of challenges so you have to persuade them you have to motivate them and you have to uh, make them uh, believe that the, yes this is possible and they'll be able to do it so this is the challenge for a manager and a company looks for such people only who in the challenging time stand out and deliver the uh, work in the designated timeline. Now, communication consists not only of facts, but ideas and emotions too. Communication is much more than words. The tone and facial expression often carry a greater meaning than words. We can communicate a lot through signs, symbols, gestures. For example, a victory sign made by two fingers communicate better than words. So now coming to the same example, uh, what we were talk, discussing. So for that project report, you have to not only tell your team, you have to be, uh, you have to sound confident. You have to have those emotions and have to, you cannot just be there, go and say that we you need this and you have to, uh, you know, just complete it and give it to me. There is nothing. You have to have those emotions. You have to express them with the idea that how will you do it and how will we complete and we all are in this together and we have to make it possible and we have to stand together not only you need only one person's effort you need all the team efforts and this will only happen with the efforts of the team uh, comprehensively and not only if one person works and the other person is not giving his 100% it won't work that way it uh, basically comprises of that you have to not just merely state the facts you have to give them the ideas you have to make them uh, uh, feel the same way by expressing the emotions by inculcating the emotions in them and then only communication becomes uh, much more than words because here you are expressing the ideas you're expressing through your emotions and which is why it is uh, uh, it, it accounts for all these things also because it plays a major role in communicating so like uh, now right now I'm only if I only read this communication consists not only of facts but ideas and emotions to communications much more than words the tone and facial expression of a carrier greater meaning we can communicate a lot through signs and symbols what does that mean what does that mean to you nothing it is not called communication I am just reading it out that you can also simply read it out unless I explain it through my own ideas through my own emotions by quoting examples by making you believe that yes you can do it and you are understanding it by ensuring that I get a feedback from you that whether you understood this or not all of this comprises of communication and features of communication so First would be two-way process, first feature. Second feature would be the ongoing process. Third feature being it not only consists of facts, but ideas and emotions too. The fourth point would be communication is a dynamic process. Now, how it is a dynamic process? So it is not constant for sure. Communication keeps on, uh, I mean, uh, right now, the, for example, we have this lecture, then we will, uh, I would expect out, uh, expect a feedback from you all. After that, we will have a second lecture. So all of this goes on. Likewise, in an organization, if one transaction is done, once that completes, there will definitely be a follow-up. Follow-up leading to another new transaction, new transaction leading to the third transaction. So all of this goes on. The business environment is not static. Nothing is constant. Everything keeps on changing. Likewise, communication also is a dynamic process. And if it is not a dynamic process, it won't survive. Communication wouldn't will not have an, any effect on the business environment otherwise. So it incorporates the changing shape of the participants and the environment. So since business keeps on moving, communication keeps is an ongoing process. So all of this taking to it together, uh, the business environment also 
is dynamic and it keeps on changing so likewise what does communication do it incorporates the changing shape of the participants and the environment now coming to the fifth feature of communication which is communication is a goal oriented process obviously we our uh, being a business environment being a business organization what we are working towards like i explained in our second paragraph only that all the levels of management are working towards achieving common goal of a business organization so communication is being also done towards this goal or uh, the business goal of the organization thus it is a goal oriented process so it can be effective if both the sender and the receiver are aware of the goal of communication and there is congruence of their goals absolutely so all the three levels of management the higher level the middle level and the lower level should know that they are working towards a common goal and if they are not in sync they it would definitely uh, you know uh, lead to not achieving the goals or there'll be a gap in achieving the goals so all of this would hamper the uh, you know objectives of the organization so there has to be a sync and the sender and the receiver should be aware of the goal of communication thus it is thus making communication a goal oriented process coming to the sixth feature of uh, communication which is communication is an interdisciplinary science so how it is an interdisciplinary science knowledge derived from several sciences is used in communication so communication is not just about speaking we are also you know uh, the uh, the uh, we are also communicating it through our body language through expressions through, and by expressing our ideas by uh, you know expressing our emotions so it is a study of body language anthropology which is uh, a study of body language is called anthropology it is a study of persuasion perception and attitudes obviously when you are uh, communicating you have to have that level of persuasion your attitude should be correct you have to uh, you know perceive the same thing in mind and whatever you're communicating is properly understood by the receiver so it is a study of persuasion perception and attitudes sociology and political sciences study of voting behavior that once you're communicating the uh, you know what you are uh, trying to explain it has to be taken in the same manner what uh, uh, you know like you have intended so all of these studies combined together brings out the communication uh, aspect so that is why it is an interdisciplinary science as communication is not only limited to mere expression of facts it also involves study of body language it also involves study of persuasion perception attitudes it also involves study of voting behavior and thus they have provided insights to make communication effect like right? so what does interdisciplinary science or what does these sciences uh, you know contribute to communication it makes it more effective so thus making it a feature of communication so let's go one by one uh, with the uh, you know headings we have designated them communication is a two way process communication is an ongoing process communication not only consists of facts but ideas and emotions too communication is a dynamic process communication is a goal oriented process and communication is an interdisciplinary science